The race began behind the safety car when we went green four laps in. It was the Black Falcon Mercedes, Mauro Engel at the wheel that led the way as they swept through La Source and plunged downhill towards Eau Rouge. Kevin Est in the Gulf livery Porsche on his toes, trying to gain places against Mathieu Gemini as they turned out of the hairpin. Down towards Eau Rouge they came, Engel trying to build that advantage over the Oh, Bamba Porsche in second spot, and it wasn't long before we had the first drama. Off the road went Andrew Harrianto's Audi, that recovered, but drama for Callum McLeod's Bentley, that was the first retirement as it came to a stop heading down the hill. An interruption to recover the cars, we went racing once again, and Kevin S continued his amazing early progress, charging up alongside Rene Rast, he was on the outside line but swept past at Blanchimont, and that was a move that Est would repeat against one of Rover Racing's Porsches a couple of laps later. Gerhard Travalza in the Lamborghini bounced off Giancarlo Fisichella's Ferrari. The road opened up for Martin Tomczyk, who swept round the outside. Travalza came back onto the road, gained an advantage, didn't give up a place, and so copped a five-second penalty on his next pit stop as Maxi Martin bashed the furniture out of the way, and Marc Rostin rotated the Boots and Genie on BMW at Bruxelles. There was more drama at the bus stop as the number 37 3Y BMW glanced off Kim Louis Schramm. Contact between those two. The BMW would feature rather more seriously a few laps later. We lost Nick Foster out of the race. The Laguna Seca winner in retirement with bad damage to the rear of the car. The Team Parker Racing Bentley off the road. That would feature, sadly, for all the wrong reasons again later as Jordan Pepper put a move on Zayed Ashkenani going up towards Le Com. For Jean-Paul Buffon, though, in that BMW, the race would not go much further. A big, big lose going up towards Le Con. It cannoned off the barrier. It not only did huge damage to the car, it also did huge damage to the guardrail. And a lengthy full-course yellow period followed. We went racing again with Nick Tandy in the lead in the 998 Rover. Porsche, but then we had another full course yellow. We lost Ryan Ratcliffe, the team Parker racing Bentley, very badly damaged. Another full course yellow, another safety car. Race back underway, Nick Tandy led. Nick Tandy got a drive through for a best sector time under a double waved yellow flag. So the car dropped down the order as Jordan Wick got involved with the modern motorsports Porsche. Then Mercedes battle picked up, coming over the line. Lucas Auer fighting with number four, the car with Lucas Stoltz at the wheel as they ran absolutely toe to toe. Drama for Andrea Calderelli. First he clipped the Audi and was clipped by the Ram racing Mercedes behind. Pipo Durani's Bentley, a lap down, wouldn't get out of the way. Eventually, elbows out. Through went Luca Stoltz as having clipped the tyres after a spin at Le Combe, the good smile racing Mercedes cycle through a pit stop. Then the rain came, and Mikhail Alyoshin, who'd found himself in the race lead, persevered as long as he could on slicks in the wet. Others managed to get the wet tyres on and dispatch the cars pronto. Into the night, the cars raced. One or two getting too close for comfort as they plunged downhill. But some great battles raging on, including the 999 Grippa M Mercedes trying to fend off the similar Black Falcon car in the hands of Yelma Berman. Up front, though, it was the Audi with Rene Rast at the wheel that had the advantage. 99 Rover Porsche cycled its way through the next pit stop, taking on wet tyres this time. And Christian Engelhart trying to defend from the number four Mercedes with Berman at the wheel was also wriggling his way through the traffic. And as if the drivers didn't have enough to worry about with battles, with the change of the weather, with the lights, they had the fireworks to cope with as well. And here at Spa, it's a wet circuit just as it was when the race got underway. Leading the Silver Cup, the 55 Atempto racing Audi Stein Scott Horst at the wheel of it. That car has been looking really good on the fringes of the top 10. 77 Barwell uh, Lamborghini has been very strong indeed in the AM category thus far. Number 80, the Asian Cup R8 had a spin as it came to La Source, but the car able to rejoin. Number 999, Maxi Buch at the wheel now, taking over uh, from Maxi Gertz, dropping down the order. So that car has now fallen into the clutches of 63. That was Christian Engelhart who wriggled his way by going through the bus stop. And number 25, Fred Verbiche, briefly having inherited the race lead, chasing after Rene Rast, but it all changes pit stop after pit stop. Now, number 88 was running in second place a little while ago, uh, but Fabian Schiller has had strife, and he too has fallen way, way back in the pack. It's one of those races where just about every car has had some sort of hiccup thus far, apart from number one, which has metronomically got on with the job. And right now, although that was leading when it pitted the WRT Audi, it is Christian Engelhart that leads here at Spa with 16 hours and 54 minutes still to go.
Despite the rain and the darkness, the racing continued at a frantic pace. Some of the best nighttime racing that the Spa 24 Hours produced, door handle to door handle. And with every full course caution, the field was once more bunched up behind the safety cars, meaning the leader could never escape his pursuers. So we had multi-car battles in the top 10, multi-car battles for podium positions. And as the weather changed, so too did the tyres. From a series of wet weather runs, we finally got onto a damp track on slick tyres. And then the battle intensified once more. Through the darkness hours, Bentley still failed to produce the pace they wanted. But Lamborghini, Porsche, Ferrari with the number 72 car, and uh, Aston Martin all battling to try and catch up with the number four Mercedes that had started from pace from uh, pole position and still led towards the midway point in the race. Big drama for the Audis. The number two and 25 car had both gone by Alex Lynn. And then as they clashed, he shot back past them. The pre-code Herbert Porsche needed to come back in for its bonnet to be fixed. Party Central down on the Rallycross stage as the race continued at pace. Past midnight and heading towards the second big slice of points and people trying to position themselves for that, trying to position himself on an outlap. Davide Rigon just missing the spinning number 33 Ferrari. It almost ended his race at that point. Behind the safety car, every time the number four car would lose its lead and be only three or four or five seconds ahead of its rivals. But with cars in between, within a couple of laps, it was back out to a minute in front. We lost the 52 Ferrari with a shattered wheel rim after and off. We lost the 51 Ferrari as well in what was not a good half hour for AF Corsa. And again, from another restart, the number two Audi, little disconcerted at being dive bombed by a rival, having not quite got himself back up to speed. Multi-car battles raged on as the cars jockeyed for position for the points at 12 hours. And everywhere you looked, there were battles for position. Looking back from the Ferrari at the pursuing Lamborghini and two other innocent bystanders running out of grip at Le Combe. 63 Lamborghini so far has been driven by only two of its drivers, Christian Engelhardt, uh, getting back in, taking over from his teammate, but no Ralph and I can yet in that car, and quite how that will progress remains to be seen. This is the view from on board at 80 kilometers an hour under full course yellow, all but impossible to see. 998 shuffling itself by dint of some crafty pit work to the top of the pile just at the 12 hour mark to be leading the race when the points were handed out. And then the fans, those who managed to stay awake, still being treated into the second half of the Spa 24 hours to some fantastically close and competitive racing. Too close for the Schnitzer BMW. John Edwards away from a restart, a lap from the uh, green flag, getting tangled up in a five car battle. And by the time he got the damaged car back to the pit lane, the telelem telemetry had told the team it was all over. Schnitzer out, and then everybody came in just after halfway for their five minute mandatory stop. Seven of the top 10 cars on pit lane at the same time having their technical stops. Now, since then, almost nobody has been able to get green flag racing to make their technical stops. So we've got a bunch of cars out of position having made their long pit stop and some cars further up the leaderboard who still have to make that five minute stop. The weather set in about two in the morning, getting wetter and wetter and behind the safety car, the conditions were clearly getting too difficult to run. Just before dawn, another set of pit stops, making sure that the drivers had everything on their side, even up to and including working windscreen wipers. Modern technology really has no limits. Final safety car so far of the race, and at 5.45, the race director 
throwing the red flag. The weather just too poor to allow racing to continue safely. So we've been parked since 5.45. It is now considerably later than that. It is now 8.40 Central European summertime. So we are now uh, three hours into our red flag delay for rain. And after a number of meetings between the race director and the teams, it has been decided that the race will remain suspended until it is deemed safe enough to continue. For the double zero Black Falcon car, uh, their race ended early. And for a number of teams, a chance to grab some well-earned sleep not to be passed over.